Today we mark Martin Luther King Day on what would have been the 86th birthday of the slain civil rights leader. We asked former Massachusetts Commissioner Against Discrimination Rick Hurst, now the publisher of African American Point of View, for his perspective on the state of race relations in America today. You know, I've been around a long time, and uh, I, I cannot say we haven't made a lot of progress because we have. We've made substantial progress. Uh, my kids couldn't gauge the progress because they're so young, but coming back from, from where I've been, where you've been, to now, the progress has been substantial. I don't even want to try to play it down with any kind of caution. Uh, we still have a ways to go. Uh, we really do. And, and some, to some degree, there's, there's a little more slippage than there should be. And, and that's what we have to be concerned about. And um, it's the, the problem in terms of the way we have to go is not just one-sided either. Uh, we, we like to say it's a white problem, but it's a black problem too. Uh, and we have to work this thing together over time, and, and eventually we'll get there. Uh, I am very pleased at the idea that there's hope for the future. Uh, back in the 60s, you know, we, we were trying to create hope. But now, um, and I think it's pretty clear that we're going to keep moving forward in spite of the efforts to um, roll back the Voter Rights Act and things right. like that. Something I want to talk about more in, in a couple of minutes, but I, I have wondered myself, and I, I, while I haven't really seen anybody say this overtly, I've gotten a sense just talking to people in, in the white community in the last few years that you know, there's sort of a feeling of we've elected a black president twice. And in, and in this Commonwealth, we elected an African-American governor. And haven't we really kind of dealt with the whole race thing? It does, doesn't that show that we've moved to, you know, the post-racial politics was a term we heard a lot right after the 2008 election. And, and I wonder if, to some extent, people have put the whole idea of the ongoing problems, as you say, we do have on the back burner because they say, you know, if, if we elect a black president, we must be past all that. <laughs> I think they put them on the back burner because it's a convenient thing to do. Uh, we're, and I understand the feeling because, I mean, it's great that we elected a black president and it's great that we had a black governor at the same time. It looked very good and it was very good. But um, it doesn't change the fact that there's an awful lot more to do. You know, the wealth gap is pretty substantial in America. Mm -hmm. And that wealth gap is causing a lot of problems, as is the income gap. Mm -hmm. And um, as is the, uh, the educational deficiencies that are, have been placed in the black community and in the brown community, and to a great extent on the white community. Uh, that, and uh, we have to do much, much more in those areas. Uh, to make certain that um, people have equal opportunity. It's one thing to say that we consider you equal, uh, but if the equal opportunity is not there, uh, you can, it, it just, it's, it's not real. Technology, uh, there, there's a technology gap that has to be bridged. A lot of things. And you, you know, you can't say that it's a cause of, that white people caused the problem. Uh, but there are problems of discrimination from the past that, uh, that uh, are, are still carrying over. There, there has been, and I think continues to be, a lot of soul searching right now because of the incidents we've seen around the country. And these have happened for years, but they've gotten a lot of attention recently. And you know where I'm going. The, sure. the shootings of, of black men, black teenagers by white police officers, some in some awfully questionable situations. And I think a lot of people are saying, how do we deal with that? Because th there's still some kind of an attitude that, well, I'll, I'll give you an example. B Bishop Talbert Swan was here and he said, how do you explain a fellow going in and shooting up a theater and getting to put his hands up, a white man, <laughs> and after killing 12 people and injuring 70, he gets taken into custody. A black man who, it turns out, doesn't even have a gun, has his hands up, he gets shot. Th there's something basically wrong and missing in the thought process. Yeah, there is. Uh, I, I give Reverend Swan credit for that, uh, that analogy because it, it's an issue. Uh, I, I'm a lawyer, so I think about these things from a legal point of view. And, and my concern more is unequal justice. You can't have one justice system for cops and another one for the, the, the average Joe. You gotta have one legal system. And, and I know uh, what probable cause means from a legal point of view. And a lot of what we've witnessed, all of us have witnessed on TV in terms of the cop shooting of unarmed black guys, uh, indicate that there, there should be trials going on. 
uh, whatever the outcome, uh, there should be trials. Uh, we know that sometimes you hold a trial and you, you believe that somebody is guilty as heck uh, and they get off. That's, that's okay. I mean, that's just our legal system. It's not perfect. But when, when cops don't go to trial after such blatant things as we've seen lately, something's wrong. Uh, something's very wrong. Uh, and and I'll, I'll even talk about them shooting a, 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 a lad with a weapon. The toy uh, gun. The, the toy out, gun. Yeah. Uh, less than two seconds, they came up and shot him. And, then, and the claims they made about how much time they gave him uh, don't jibe with the less than two seconds that it took him to shoot him. And that's all on tape. So, I mean, there, there's something seriously wrong. And, and to be frank with you, I, I think it has to do with uh, cop training. Uh, I, I think it has to do with inherent fear on the part of cops over black men, uh, something that has uh, been a part of our, our relationship with the cops for years. Um, and, and I think it has something to do with the fact that, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's okay. Once, you know, when you know it's okay, you're less inclined to be reserved about pulling that weapon and shooting somebody. So I, I'm, I'm not happy about what's going on. I do think that we're on the track of making some real changes in the country. There are a lot of venues in the country where they've already begun to make the changes. One of the things they're doing that I think is very important is a lot of the police departments around the country are transferring the cases against cops out of their venue. And, and I think that's going to have to happen more and more and more. If the police officer is not guilty of anything, what's wrong with an independent investigation that makes the appearance of justice uh, what, the way we want it to be? So, A couple of minutes left. Let's go back to an area you mentioned that a lot of people aren't thinking about. We could talk about all this for a very long time. The Voting Rights Act, that not being continued, that is a big deal. It has to do with national politics and where that's going and where Congress is and where Congress is going. That is a big concern for people like yourself, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's a big concern because I, I read a lot, uh, for one, and, and I've lived through the civil rights movement. And um, I know how important voter rights is and how difficult it was for us to gain those rights and, 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 and at the passage of the Voter Rights Act in 1965. And then I, I, I read a lot about Republicans' motivation for, um, for all the changes they want to uh, make in, in voter registration laws and, and voter ID laws. And, and I read about what they say when they don't think anybody's listening about why they do it. And the motivation is not nice. The motivation is to reduce minority voting, uh, period. And, and it's, it's, it's something that scares the daylights out of people like me who've been through it all. What I do believe is I think white America is watching as well as black America. And um, I think that we've come far enough along that we're going to put the brakes on and, um, and think our way through this thing. I really believe that. But there's going to be some disruptions in the process. Rick Hurst, always good to have you and always good to see you. Thanks for your perspective.